Support for the Capital Connection comes from United University Professions, representing 37,000 academic and professional employees at SUNY campuses and teaching hospitals across New York State. Frederick E. Cole, President, UUPinfo.org. And New York State United Teachers, representing professionals in education and healthcare, online at nysut.org. It's the Capital Connection. Hi, I'm Alan Chartok. Joining us this week, and we're lucky to have him, is Republican New York State Assembly Minority Leader William Will Barclay. Leader Barclay, thanks for being here. Thanks for showing up. Good to have you back with us. Well, thank you very much for having me on your show. Well, you know, we always like it. Okay. Now, New York's new concealed carry gun law went into effect this week. The measure was approved in a July special session after the U.S. Supreme Court struck down the state's previous statute, which said individuals needed a specific reason to carry concealed weapons. With exceptions for some professions, the new legislation prohibits carrying guns in so-called sensitive places, including schools, churches, government buildings, and parks. On September 4th, the age to buy a semi-automatic weapon will be raised from 18 to 21. Your thoughts on the new law? Well, I, I don't think it's going to solve any of the problems that we're having, the high, you know, high increases in violent crime throughout the state. So I oppose these, I think, really just measures that punish legal gun owners versus trying to get, uh, uh, you know, guns out of the hands of criminals. So, uh, you know, I'm disappointed. I thought it was a knee-jerk reaction. I don't think it's a well-drafted law. Uh, I know it's being challenged in several courts, and I'm optimistic that it will eventually get overturned. Well, how is it all working in the legislature? Are you finding it's going according to Hoyle, that it's being fair, or is stuff being shoved at you that really shouldn't be? I think so. Uh, I mean, we did that through special session, but yet we can't go back and do a special session session to address uh, issues like the bail, cashless bail issue that we have uh, to really address crime. You see every day, and we've talked about it numerous times, Alan, on your show, mm. uh, every day you open the paper, you see recidivists back out on the street committing more violent crime. And uh, I'd like to have a special session go back and address that. And, uh, you know, full well, my position, what we ought to do is give judges more authority to keep people incarcerated that are, you know, alleged violent criminals. Now, this bail reform has been the clarion call from Republicans, but even some Democrats, including Albany County DA David Soares, wants more done. Your thoughts? Correct. And also the mayor of New York City. So it's, it is, I think, as the headlines continue, as we see the crime spike, uh, I think as there's more of an outcry from uh, New Yorkers throughout the state, uh, you know, politicians, one thing we do is want to get reelected and we hear from our constituents. I think a lot of Democrats are hearing from their constituents that something ought to be done. However, the uh, extreme hard left progressives are refusing to do and they carry a lot of clout, unfortunately, I think, in New York. And apparently the governor is listening to them, too, because she doesn't seem to be willing to use some political capital to get uh, things done uh, as far as bail and other criminal justice type measures. So you don't think the governor is doing a good job? I don't. Uh, you know, I had high hopes for her as a fellow uh, upstater when she got, uh, you know, uh, she came in after Cuomo. I, I was hopeful that she would see New York as a full state and not just be catering again to some liberal agenda from New York City. But unfortunately, I think uh, partisan days, uh, hyper partisan days are here and you hear it when she's talking. I mean, you probably heard that in her talk down in a, in a campaign rally, she said uh, Republicans ought to move out of state. We know someone who also said that uh, not long ago, the former Governor Cuomo, she seems to have picked up right where he left behind. We're talking to William Will Barclay. Do you miss uh, Andrew Cuomo? Yeah, that's a great question. Sometimes <laughs> I, I wonder uh, how things, uh, it, for a lot of his faults, which he had plenty of them, and I think it was the right thing for him to resign, and if he didn't, I would have supported impeaching him. However, he did stick up 
from time to time against some of the progressive movements. I think after he got primaried a few times from the left, that went out the door to some degree. But at least early on in his administrations, he did try to push back and I think tried to be a little bit more of a moderating force on the Democrats in New York and New York State. Uh, so that's funny. Yes, I've heard a number of people say, you know, geez, maybe uh, Oakle's not better. Maybe she's actually worse and pine for the days we had Andrew Cuomo back. I'm not at that stage, I don't think, but I can see that some of the logic in that, that argument. So we do have a big health problem in New York State, and there's a big question as to whether we can do more to prevent COVID and things like that. Do you have any positions on that? The one thing I know we shouldn't do is try to have government take over it, as they've tried to do a number of times. Our house has passed uh, government takeover of health care. You know, the cost of that is so astronomical, I don't see how it could ever realistically take place, you know, if the political will was to do something like that. And ultimately, as you know, uh, most New Yorkers have health insurance. I think there's something like 3 or 4% of New Yorkers are not insured, and that's usually by their own choice. It's generally someone younger that just doesn't see the need in it. So ultimately, most people that need health care can get health care. So the fact is, I don't think we ought to be trying to have a government takeover of our health care system. The other thing I, I, I disagree with, and one thing I think Coco continues to do, and she might have picked it up from the, her prior boss, uh, Andrew Cuomo, is continuing these emergency powers uh, that she has. Hopefully, now I'm not naive to think that we're totally out of the woods, but for the most part, I think people are trying to get back to their regular lives. COVID is not as big of a factor as it certainly was a year, a year, two years ago. And the idea that we need to continue these emergency powers to somehow uh, protect against uh, New Yorkers against COVID uh, doesn't seem to be rational to me. I think it's for other reasons that the governor likes to uh, continue on to these powers. So I would like to see those expire and get back to business as usual. Do you have um, a, do you have a government. I'm sorry, do you have a Republican uh, who you think could win the governorship, you know, because of yeah. popularity? Well, Lee Zeldin, of course. I'm fully backing Lee. You right really believe that? You really chance. believe Lee Zeldin, the congressman from, you know, Long Island, maybe some would even say the failed congressman from Long Island, can win? I do, and for the reasons I point out. First of all, uh, the Democratic brand is not good, particularly the president's uh, numbers. Even in you know deep blue New York State, I saw some numbers the other day. Uh, upstate, he's particularly unpopular, but even in you know, Manhattan, uh, his numbers, although he's not he's underwater there like he is in the other parts of the state. So they, the Democrats have to deal with an unpopular president. Uh, traditionally, as you know, uh, the party in power uh, in the presidency loses seats during these midterm elections, we'll see. But ultimately, what people care about, at least what I'm hearing about, they care about crime. Uh, they care about inflation. They care about you know the cost of doing business, jobs, the economy. And all under one party rule, which we have, uh, none of those things are trending right. And so as Republicans, I think it's important, and I think Lee's doing a good job of that, is get that message out and say there is an alternative. There is an alternative, and that's Republicans. Please come out and vote. If you want change, this is how you're going to get change and uh, maybe put the state back on the right path. So let's talk about the governor's race just a little bit more. You've endorsed Lee Zeldin for governor. Why? Is he really the best candidate, the far right, to take on Governor Kathy Hochul, potentially the first elected female governor of the state? Wouldn't the Republicans do better with a more moderate candidate? Well, first, you know, I, I maybe take exception to the fact that he's called far right. I think what he is is a common sense uh, elected official who has had a good record in Congress. And I think you can take that record and be successful as the governor of this, uh, New York State. You know, interestingly, we hear a lot about the far right, you know, Republicans are extreme. In my mind, not wanting $5 gas prices, I don't think that's extreme. In my mind, wanting streets uh, to be safe, uh, I don't think that's extreme. Backing the um, law enforcement, I don't think that's extreme. I think the agenda that's put forth by the Democrats and their leader, Kathy Hochul, is what's extreme, not the Republican side. So I think people are waking up to that. I understand New York's a Democratic state. Lee's got a challenge. Uh, but I'm optimistic that he can be successful. We'll see. I think, you know, I've been in politics a long time. I think this uh, this chance of us winning the governorships this year is better than it has been in a long, long time. 
Well, you've done it before. Pataki was there for three terms. Right. right? Okay. Yeah. So Zeldin voted not to certify Joe Biden as president. How do you justify that? I mean, he won. Yeah. Interestingly, you know, a lot of Democrats wouldn't vote for uh, Trump, uh, certify Trump for president. So it's not like this is just one party doing the other. For some reason, it gets a lot more uh, publicity when the Republicans done it versus uh, when the Democrats did it. But I think it's time really to move on. I think it's we'll look at our current situation, the problems we have in New York, and look and vote for a leader that you think can change the status quo, what's going on in New York. And I happen to think Lee Zeldin's that candidate. Do you really think that? Or did you think he was just somebody who's con- <laughs> I convenient? Do think that. I very much so. <laughs> okay. Let's go down to the farm workers. Governor Hochul should listen to the experts and keep overtime threshold at 60 hours, reject farm wage board recommendations for nearly two years. My colleagues in the Assembly Minority Conference and I have been imploring the farm workers wage board to keep the overtime threshold for farm workers at 60 hours a week. This is you, of course, with the board set to make its recommendations to Governor Kathy Hochul next month. And I think you said, I'm calling on the governor once again to wholly reject the board's plan to reduce the threshold from 60 to 40 hours. Absolutely. Uh, You know, the farming is already a very challenging business to be in. Margins are tight, obviously, just like other businesses. They're struggling because of costs going up and because of inflation. Uh, And the idea that government come in and somehow dictate uh, how the labor works on a farm isn't necessarily based in reality. The problem is, as you know, when crops grow, they need to be harvested, and that's a time period that has to take place. So when you have to try to say you can't uh, have people you know, work more than 40 hours a week or have to pay them overtime as a result, uh, that's going to be very expensive. When you have tight margins, as they do in agriculture, to do that, I think, is going to create real hardship, and they're going to have a hard time getting workers. And frankly, I'm not sure the workers are the ones that are all supportive of this. Interestingly, this bill was put forth by uh, a New York City Democrat. The governor, Cuomo, who signed the farm labor bill um, I don't know, a few years ago, signed it in New York City at the news, uh, at Newsweek, uh, or not Newsday, the um, Newsday, uh, you know, it wasn't even upstate where most of agriculture takes place in in, uh, in New York. So, you know, I, I just think it's a wrong-headed policy. I think it's going to hurt agriculture, which I think is our second biggest industry uh, in New York State. And it's not just me saying this. I hear all the time from farmers and from farm laborers, for that matter. So uh, I hope it's rejected. Uh, we can't. It's, it's just bad policy. We're talking to Will Barclay, and it's the Capital Connection. He is the New York State Assembly Minority Leader, the Republican, of course, the state Senate primary races. How important is it that you win some of those races? Win them in the general now, because the pri- obviously the primary is over. Right. Uh, I don't. There was a few on the Republican side. I'm talking about the general. You're right. Yeah, the general. I, I, it's very important, I, and I look forward to winning a lot of seats uh, in the assembly. Um, you know, in both houses, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, to retake the majorities, but it's not impossible. And again, it depends on how fed up the voters are with the one-party rule that we have in Albany, and they want change. And again, I would encourage everybody who wants change, doesn't think the state's on the right track, hey, give the Republicans a chance. And uh, again, I don't think anything that we're advocating for, I call it common sense, is extreme. I think it's good common sense, and uh, we can change the direction the state's in and make it once again the uh, empire state that it once was known as. You know, Will Barclay, uh, the recent, uh, there was a recent primary question that occurred to me to ask you, and that is the state Republican Party chairman Nick Langworthy defeating Carl Palladino, the 2010 gubernatorial candidate in the primary for the open 23rd congressional district seat. Many Republicans were not happy with Langworthy running for the seat. So what do you make of that? Well, I was pleased he won. I supported Nick, so I was pleased that uh, he uh, ran. I'm pleased he won. And, you know, I think he could manage, and I think he did manage uh, effectively the party at the same time. Uh, so I didn't, have, I didn't have a problem with him running and continuing as a state chairman, and I'm glad it's worked out. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the president of the United States and the former president, Donald Trump, 
you know, is right in the middle of a lot of things. Are you still supporting Donald Trump? Well, he's not supporting, I suppose. I thought, again, as I've mentioned publicly many times, I didn't always love uh, the way he governed, but I did agree with the policies that uh, he pushed forth, and I thought he accomplished a lot as president. Now, he's no longer president, as you're aware of, and we have a new president, (laughs) President Biden, and I don't think this president, I don't support his policies, I don't think he's doing a good job, and I think, frankly, Democrats around the state have a lot to answer and could be asked that question particularly upstate, hey, do you support this guy? Do you support the guy that's brought us this record high inflation? Do you support the guy that's had, in my opinion, uh, you know, really terrible uh, foreign policy? We've had the terrible times in Afghanistan. Do you support a guy that's uh, led crime throughout the country, not just New York State, skyrocket? Uh, I don't think that's what uh, people want. And if this is what uh, Democrats want to attach their wagon to, they're more than welcome to attach and say this is – our guy, and I think Kathy Hochul once called herself a Joe Biden Democrat. Well, she ought to uh, be able to answer for that if that's really what she believes. Will Barkley, as we speak, President Biden is set to address the nation on the issue of democracy and the threats to democracy. Are you worried about the survival of democracy in America? Well, I think we always have to be uh, vigilant against that. Uh, and I, I think there's concerns, maybe probably as much concern from the left and the right on democracy. It's what this country is built on. I think, you know, we hear time and time again, part of big part of democracy is freedom of speech. And we see throughout uh, this country, particularly on campuses, but other places and spread, I think, where there's a restraint on uh, uh, free speech. And I think that's very dangerous. So I think always, and I don't know, if, you know, I'm not a historian, I don't know, you know, it's always, I think, at risk, and we can't take anything for granted, and we must be vigilant about it. And whether this time's worse than any other time in our history, uh, I don't know. But, uh, again, I, I just think we need to be careful with that and make sure that we have a Constitution and uh, that people abide by the Constitution. I think that's a wholly reasonable and uh, right way for our country and our state to abide by. We're speaking to Republican New York State Assembly Minority Leader William Will Barclay. Hey, Will, let me ask you this. We got some inflation in this state. Any way around that? Well, you know, we've proposed uh, a number of things that we could do to give New Yorkers breaks. It's not necessarily going to solve the inflation problem. It's going to give New Yorkers breaks. One is taking the sales tax off a number of items. We're pleased that uh, the governor filed our lead and the majorities uh, in the budget and did take off the gas tax um, on uh, sales tax on on gas. But there's a lot of other things we uh, could do it on, and I support doing that. But ultimately, I think from the country standpoint, you're going to have to just rein in uh, the spending that's been going on. That's been uh, on both sides, frankly, both Republicans and Democrats have supported. But that's what's gotten us into this record high inflation. It, the, the egregious thing about inflation, as you know very well, Alan, is the idea that it really hits middle lower class people because their dollar just won't go as far. And, and I recently was in the grocery store. I don't think I can go into the grocery store. You probably experienced the same thing without spending at least fifty dollars, even when you run in just to grab a few items, uh, you know, you see the prices are just through the roof. And that's tough. That's tough on anybody and particularly tough on those, you know, on fixed income or those, uh, um, you know, paycheck doesn't go that far uh, to be able to pay for this stuff is really difficult. So I think people are very concerned and rightfully so with inflation. And unfortunately, I don't see this abating anytime uh, soon. So I think we're in for, you know, more challenge than that. In now, that regard, until we can go ahead. Now, Will Barclay, uh, the Supreme Court has overturned Roe v. Wade. Will this decision ultimately hurt Republicans in blue state New York at the ballot box? I don't know. I don't think so, because in New York, I don't think abortion rights are you know under uh, attack. I don't think anything's going to change with abortion rights in in New York. Other states. Even you saw there was a you probably saw I think it was in Kentucky when they tried to enshrine uh, uh, the right against abortion in the Constitution failed. So uh, I don't know. It probably will um, rally maybe some of the strong Democrats, but there are already strong Democrats that are going to uh, probably vote against Republicans anyways. What I think what Republicans ought to message. I happen to be um, pro-life, but what I think Republicans ought to message is the extremes 
on the other side. And, you know, does everybody feel like abortion should be available in law all the way up to birth? You know, where, where does it end? And I think there's a lot of extreme positions being put out there by uh, pro-abortionists. And I think uh, if we get you know, a lot of supported by Democrats, um, I think they should be held accountable for that, too. But ultimately, I don't think that's an issue here in New York. I think, again, most people are concerned about economic issues, pocketbook issues. They're concerned about crime, et cetera. Uh, so I don't think abortion is going to play a big uh, role in uh, November here in New York. You know, uh, there's a new study by the New York State School Boards Association that finds this falls back to school focuses on overcoming learning gaps due to the pandemic. Are you worried that we might see another COVID surge further deepening the learning gap? I would definitely be worried about that. And I hope uh, we don't follow the same uh, path that we followed before when we're closing down schools for long periods of time. Uh, I don't think COVID is going to be as I, I don't have any basis. I'm not a scientist, but I don't think I hope maybe it's wishful thinking that we're not going to face the same um, acuteness of the COVID uh, pandemic that we've had in the past. Uh, but if we really do, I just think we have to look at a different policy because I think there is was a learning gap, and now we're seeing studies showing that that really has been very problematic when we shut schools down for so long. So, you know, you're in Blue State, New York. You've got um, an, maybe an unenviable position of being basically <laughs> the head Republican. Does that ever get to you? Uh, you know, one thing is, I get that a lot. And first of all, I would always encourage anybody that feels like they want to try to do something that's right for their state, their community, or whatever, to run for office. Uh, regardless of what party you're in, uh, if you feel like you can make a difference and want to do it, regardless of your Republican, Democrat, regardless of what body, whether it's state legislature, local, and who controls it, if you feel strongly about it and want to make a difference, you ought to run. And I think you can, regardless of being you know, in the, in the case of the assembly controlled by Democrats, I still think Republicans can, I think it shows, we can get things done. We, you know, I talk about bail reform a lot. And, you know, we did get reforms to the cashless bail system that we were looking for. We were able to push through uh, easing of the gas tax in New York State. So, you know, we don't always get all the credit, but we can be effective, and I think we can get things done. So I don't think it's always fair to say, oh, you're a Republican in deep blue New York or in the Assembly, you never get anything done. Uh, I just don't think that holds water. I think we can. We don't always get the credit for it, but um, we do get things done from time to time. So how about, Will Barkley, how about the redistricting impact on the primaries? Did the Democrats make a big mistake? For example, Nadler and Maloney ended up in the same district, <laughs> pitted against each other. Right. I know, you must sit around the dinner table and talk to people about, boy, did they mess up there, did they? Well, I will say I don't really sit around a dinner table. I don't know how thrilled my wife is about politics overall, or my kids for that matter, but I do talk a lot about it, at least around uh, the office table from time to time. I do think uh, they went too far, particularly with the congressional uh, districts, uh, trying to help out the National Democrats, and maybe in the hopes to uh, keep Congress through November. And as a result, uh, a court that was majority appointed, the Court of Appeals, more majority appointed by Cuomo, Democrat, uh, knocked it down. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's hard to say they didn't go too far. In fact, it's not just me saying that as a politician. Uh, the Court of Appeals thought they went too far, too, and, you know, they paid the price for that. And you had issues, you had seats that were up for, you know, primaries like Nadler's seat. So if Langworthy wins the congressional race, who you got as his replacement as the GOP chair? We hear former Republican Assemblyman John Faso is in line for the job. We have him on the radio here a lot. I'm wondering uh, whether you can confirm that for us. I've heard that rumor. I can't confirm that at all. But listen, if, uh, I think a lot of John Faso. And if uh, he ultimately becomes the state chairman, I think he would be a great uh, Mr. Chairman, as the former leader of the, in the Assembly, Republican leader, so my predecessor of mine. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I don't have any inside information. On Why, if not you having inside information, who? Well, we still have a chairman right now, so I don't know if we're at that at that point yet. So there's maybe rumors out there, but I don't think anything is being done. So you, know, you mean if the chairman sure. doesn't survive politically, uh, then you might have something to say about the matter? I suppose you're right. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. So what shape is New York in? I mean, we have a lot of Democrats. We have an, a minute and 13 seconds. I we need you to sum it up. What kind of political position are we in? Strong, weak, middle, what? Well, I never like to talk about down about my state because I love uh, New York. My family's been here forever. I'm not going anywhere. But I do think as a result of one-party rule, we have gone to extremes, extreme policies that are causing increases in crime, continuing to a deteriorating economy, inflation, uh, you know, uh, so education. I'd like to see more parental um, voice in education. So I think most Americans, I think even New Yorkers, probably want some balance. And what I think to bring balance back, we have to get Republicans elected. And so I'd love to see Lee Zeldin uh, become governor. I'd love to see our numbers increase in both the Senate and the Assembly where uh, we can get those common sense solutions that Republicans had uh, heard and hopefully get some paths to try to get the state uh, back on track. We have simply said one party rule has not worked for us. This governor has not been able to push back against the more extreme elements of her party. In fact, I think she's kowtowed to them. And as a result, it's time for a change. We've been talking to our guest, Republican Assembly Minority Leader William Will Barclay. Thanks so much for joining us as always. I'm pleased to call you my friend because you come on and you face these questions and you do it well. Thanks so much. Thank you, Alan. I always love being on your show.